Good afternoon and welcome. We are in Honors Freshman English in Worland High School. Our job today is to finish the text, Romeo and Juliet. We are in 5-3. You're on your hymnals on page 920. And I want to begin with some general observations and then we'll listen to the text. One, Romeo and Juliet has often been labeled a play of love. But it's fairly clear once you look at this play, it's far more a play of politics than it is a play of outright romantic love. We will end our play in a graveyard. Jot down in your notes what is significant about that fact. We will end our play in a graveyard. What is significant about that fact? Two parts to this question. One, I'd like for you to consider the opening scene of the play, where did it begin? We open the play Romeo and Juliet where? In the center of Verona. We are in the marketplace. That's where we begin, where economics takes place. We end our play not in Verona, outside Verona. The, the graveyard, right? Two. Of course, this has been a play about young love, but in many ways, we've been dancing around the idea of death from the very beginning. How many times, we could go back and ask this question, and for some of you, it kind of blow your mind, how many scenes death is mentioned, either directly or indirectly? So, for example, the Queen Mab speech about dreaming, you get a game that gets played, like dreaming is kind of like dying, it's kind of like being dead. When you're asleep, it's kind of like a mini death, if you will, which of course is kind of true. We've had mentions to death all the way through. Notice we'll begin, though, ironically, with Paris. See, I can ask a question like this, when was the last time we saw Paris in this play? Do you remember? When he was talking with Juliet, and he was saying to Juliet, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get to marry me, right? That kind of thing. Of course, now we're gonna have Paris. Why is Paris here? Well, he is coming to pay his last respects to the woman who would have been his wife. Ironically, of course, you're gonna have a coming together of Paris and Romeo. Ironically, both of them are trying to show respect in some ways. But Paris will misunderstand what's going on. And are you ready for this? Before Romeo kills himself, he will in fact kill Paris. Now, if you know your Greek mythology, you understand that naming this character Paris is intentional by Shakespeare. Remember who Paris was. It was Paris who kickstarts the whole Trojan War. Why? because he will abduct, if not seduce, Helen and take her away to the city of Troy, where, of course, all kinds of terrible things happen in that 10-year-long war. Right. Romeo will take the life of Paris and then will find himself face to face with Juliet, where he will say about her, wow, you almost look like you're still alive. That is because she is still alive, right? She is not actually dead. You will have a series of unfortunate events culminating with Friar Lawrence showing up. Two things about him we should point out. By the time he shows up, already bad things are starting to happen. He will work hard to try to get Juliet out of the mausoleum. When she doesn't follow him, he abandons her there, giving her enough time to make her final speech, and then, of course, take her life. Finally, Friar Lawrence will speak a summation of the events of the play, but I want you to pay attention to the things he doesn't say, stuff he leaves out. He doesn't want to implicate himself. Finally, we will, begin, or we will end our play where we began, with the prince, who will make an observation that this is what happens when families hold long-term grudges, sad to say. In the meantime, we have more death. Romeo losing his mama, for example. So you got lots of people dying at the end of this play. Ironically, though, it appears as if the Montagues and the Capulets are finally ready to bury the hatchet. 
That is to say, to come to some kind of resolution. All right, here we go. We're going to now just listen to these final lines. I'm on 920 with you. Let's pay attention. Read closely. We'll begin with Paris. And beyond yew trees lay thee all alone, holding thine ear close in a hollow ground, so shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, being loose, unfirm with thee in thy graves, but thou shalt hear it. Whistle then to thee a signal that thou hearest something approach. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee, go. Flowers, thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, woe, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will dew, or wanting that, with tears distilled by moans. The obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. warning something doth approach what cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obsequies and true love's right what with a torch Muffle me night a while give me that matter and the wrenching eye hope take this letter early in the morning see thou deliver it to my lord and father give me the light Upon thy life I charge thee, whate'er thou hearst or seest, stand all aloof, and do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring that I must you use in employment, therefore hence be gone. But if thou jealous dost return to prime what thy father shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. I'll kill you if you try and stop. a savage wild, more fierce and more inexorable far than empty tigers of the roaring sea. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that. Live and be prosperous. And farewell, good fellow. For all this thing, I'll hide me here about. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Thou debtest of more, thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest muscle of the earth. Thus I enforce thy He opens the door of the mausoleum. And in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. This is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died, and here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I you see, this is ironic. Paris assumes because he has to. It's not like he knows anything that's going on. He assumes, why is Romeo there? See, can you deduce it from what he's just read? Go back and read the lines again. What is it? What? Who does he think this is? Of course he knows it's Romeo. But Romeo has done what? Kill Two Tibble. important things. One, kill Tibble. Kill Tibble. Which, Two, which pretty kill much kill Robert. He's the reason Juliet's dead. What? Wait, does he know that? That's kind of backwards. No, no, no. Why does he assume Juliet is dead? Why does he assume Juliet killed herself? Oh, See, God. only you know that Juliet is supposedly killed herself. Right. Juliet in such anguish over the loss of her relation, Tybalt, she got so unhappy and sad, she killed herself. So Paris is like, here is the killer of both Tybalt and Juliet, and he must be here to jack with Tybalt's body, to like go inside the mausoleum and to like 
you know, do terrible things to it or whatever. Right. So in other words, he has it all wrong. Notice this is the second time that a relation of Juliet has it all wrong and Romeo ends up having to commit murder. The first, of course, was Tybalt himself. Now we'll have the same game. Romeo, however, doesn't work very hard to try to explain it. Earlier, notice the question was, why wouldn't Romeo just tell Tybalt, dude, we cannot fight because I just married See, it doesn't work, right? He, doesn't, he won't do it. Here, same gig. He won't tell Paris, even though he's ready to go and kill himself, he won't tell Paris, dude, 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 I am not here for that. I am here because this woman is my wife. We married against it or without anyone. No, he doesn't do it. Watch what he does say. Watch this confrontation between Romeo and Tybalt. Or, Romeo and Paris. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with thee, for thou must die. I must indeed. Therefore came I hither, good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me. Think upon these, girl, let them affright thee. I beseech thee, youth, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone! By heaven, I love thee better than myself, for I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone, live! And hereafter say a madman's mercy bid thee run away. I do defy thy conjurations, and apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me, then have a demon! Who knows? They fight. Let me go to the water. Oh! I am saying, if thou be merciful, open the tomb. He has to be laid in the tomb next to Juliet. Let me peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman, noble county Perry. Once of my man, my mighty tossed soul did not attend him as we rode. I think he told me Perry should have married Juliet. Said he not so? Or did I dream it so, or am I mad? Hearing him talk of Julia to think it was. He doesn't know who he's killed. He really doesn't know who Paris is. Oh, give me thy hand. One bit with me in Sir Misfortune's book. I <laughs> read thee in a triumphant grave. <coughs> a grave? Oh, no. A lantern slot of youth. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this vault a feasting presence full of life. Death, why thou there by a dead man in turn? How oft, when men are at the point of death, have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? Oh, my love, my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. You don't look dead. Thou art not dead. conquered. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheek, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, liest thou there in thy bloody sheet? Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? Forgive me, cousin. Romeo's all about Did forgiveness now. I am not yet so fair. Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous and that the lean of horrid monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-weary flesh. I look your last, arms take your last embrace, and lips 
Oh, you, the doors of breath, sealed with a righteous gift, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct, come, unsavory guide, thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick weary bark. Here's to my love. He's drank the poison. Thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, I die. Now, of course, this is a classic example of how listening to the play is not watching the play. One of the interesting side notes here is what a director of this play will do in regards to the sense of timing. Sometimes directors like to have that very final line spoken by Romeo, spoken by Romeo as Juliet literally opens her eyes. So the eyes of Juliet open right as Romeo speaks what are those last words? Look at what he says. Right as he speaks, the very last things he says, and Juliet opens her eyes, right? Other directors like to go ahead and have Romeo speak his last word, literally die and sometimes fall onto her body, and then they'll lay there motionless for a few seconds and kind of building suspense, and then Romeo, dead, Juliet opens her eyes and begins to sit up so that there's this tension in play. When you're filming this play, and we'll study this with both the Zeffirelli version and the Leonardo version, when you're filming this, you can do that thing where you cut from one scene or one perspective to another so that as Romeo drinks the, and speaks his last words, Juliet's eyes open, for example, and he doesn't realize. She's literally lying there with her eyes open while he speaks many of the lines at the very end of and he doesn't he never looks to see it again. Drake's speaks his lights and it's gone, just as Juliet is coming to. So you can kind of decide. If I were if I were performing this or producing this on stage, how would I like what would be the most killer way to do this, right? The most unsettling way to do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Juliet wakes up. Um, like you already said, he didn't know who Paris was. Did Romeo have any idea about the plans for her to marry Paris? See, that's what he just says, right? He says, I think I heard, but I can't remember if I heard that maybe there were some plans for her to marry or something like that. Yeah, so he really doesn't have much of an idea of really what's going on. This is one of those situations where... The audience knows stuff the characters in the play don't know, or don't know very well. All right, here we go. Juliet, I'm back. Everything is supposed to work out. Poor Juliet. Bad, bad news. <laughs> Poor Lawrence. One that knows you well. Tell me, my good friend. What torch is yon that vainly lends his like to grubs and ivy skulls, like a stone that burns in the Cable's monument? It does so, holy sir. And there's my master, one that you love. Who is it? Romeo. How long has he been there? Full half an hour. Oh, God, Lord. I dare not, sir. My master knows not that I am gone hence. Fearfully they menace me with death if I did stay to look on his intent. Stay the head of alone. Fear comes upon me. Oh, my child, fear some ill and thrifty thing. As I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master and More I dreaming! And that my master sleep. You kind of see this a common oh, motif, right? Alack, alack! What plant is this which stains the stony entrance of the Seneca? What made these masters of the saw us to lie discolored by this place of peace? One more body oh. Lawrence is responsible for. Oh, pale! Who else? What? That is too Steeped in blood. Oh, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady stirs. Comfortable, friar. Ah, comfortable. Where is my lord? I do 
remember well where I should be, and here I am. Where is my Romeo? Oh, <coughs> my lady, come from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in my bosom there lies dead, and Paris too. Come, I am disposed of thee on my sisterhood of holy nuns. Oh, Stay not to quit, for the watch is coming. Come, go with Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Get thee hence, for I will not away. What's here? A cup. Closed in my true love's hand. Now we're going to have the debate, as you must, about the neglect of responsibility of Friar Lawrence. You could make the argument... Probably not the best idea to marry those two kids without tell. Probably not the best idea to try again, fool the parents by faking Juliet's death. And now, a monumental misjudgment in calculation of, act, uh, of, of responsibility, he leaves her down there. Now, why do you think he does this? It's a matter of, yeah, it's self-preservation, isn't it? He knows he's going to be... Yeah, in some ways implicated, right? And so we can debate this. Does Lawrence leave there knowing Juliet's going to take her life? And in the process of Juliet taking her life, there's only one other person alive, really, who can speak to the events of the play, and who's that? The nurse. That's the only other person left, right? So maybe it helps him. Some of you will say, boy, that's pretty calculating and cold and ruthless. I just can't believe that a man of the cloth would actually see it that way, maybe better to say he just panics. You know, it's like, oh no, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, and he kind of leaves, uh, maybe to kind of set it up, assuming that by the time he gets back, Juliet will still be alive. So it's like he started with like a white lie kind of thing? Yeah, see how this works? This is a fine point. Let's put it in our notes. Seidel's making an outstanding observation. This play suggests that we go from bad to worse to worser, right? And a lot of it has to do with the kinds of indiscretions or lies that are told, right? So now we go to Juliet. Here we go. Final words for Juliet. Question. Do you see Juliet, the character, as having grown or evolved? Is, do you see these lines as really powerfully emotional or more like reasoned out? She doesn't she doesn't really necessarily uh, have a, a, as much of that passionate emotion that you're going to see that she had when she was ready to drink the, uh, you know, the, the fake poison and all of that. Let's watch. Read closely. Pay close attention to the lines. Poison I see have been his timeless end. Oh, chill. Drunk all. And left no friendly drop to help me out. I will kiss thy lips. I be some poison yet doth hang on that to make me die with a restored. Thy lips are wrong. Meanwhile, which way? Meanwhile, then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger. This is thy sheath. Bloody search about the churchyard. Go, some of you, where you find a tatch. Pitiful sight. Here lies the county slain, and Juliet bleeding, warm, and newly dead, who here hath lain this two days buried. Go tell the prince. Run to the Capulets. Raise up the Montague. Summon the search. We see the ground whereon these woes do lie, but the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance describe. Here's Romeo's man. We found him in the churchyard. Hold him in safety till the prince come hither. It is a friar that trembles, sighs, and weeps. We took this matter from his faith from him as he was coming from this churchyard side. Great suspicion. Stay the friar too. What? This adventure is so early up. The call of a person from our morning rest. What should it be today to shriek abroad? The people in the street cry Romeo, so Juliet, and so Paris. What fear is this which startled in our ears? Sovereign, here lies the county palace slain, and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before, warm and new killed. See, th new killed. See, that's a key phrase. Think about Juliet's mom and dad. 
A. Juliet's committed suicide because of the tragic death of Tybalt. They have to bury her. B. No, she wasn't actually dead. She's alive. C. Well, now she's dead again because she's taken her life a second time. You know, you, can you imagine if you're a parent, you're like, wait, 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 what's going on? You need somebody to explain, and there are only two people who can explain. The nurse. And one of them's the friar who's standing on stage. What kind of look does he have on his right. face? Yeah. Right, right. You can got it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to start talking. <laughs> I gotta explain some stuff. Why right, watch this. Look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger is with stain. Although his house is empty on the back of Montague, and it mischieved in my daughter's bosom. This sight of death is as a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. Come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir more early down. Yes, my liege. My wife is dead tonight. See? Romeo's bomb's gone. Grief of my son's exile hath stopped her breath. What further woe conspires against my age? Who can thou succeed? Oh, thou untaught. What manners is in this to press before thy father to a grave? Seal up the mouth of outrage for a while till we can clear these ambiguities. And know that spring, their head, their true descent. And then will I be general of your woes and lead you even to death. Meantime, forbear, and let this chance be slave to patience. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. I am the greatest, able to do least yet most. Here we go. It is the time and place to make against me of this direful murder. And here I stand, both to impeach and purge, myself condemned and myself excused. And say at once what thou hast known in this. I will be pleased for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, their dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, their dead, that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from the city, for whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed, and would have married her perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some mean to rid her from this second marriage, or in my cell, there would she kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime, I writ to Romeo that he should hither come, as this dire night, to help to take her from her borrowed grave, be the time the potion's force should cease. But he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then, all alone, at the prefixed hour of her waking, came I to take her from her kindred vault, meaning to keep her close to my cell, till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, some minute ere the time of her awaking, here, untimely lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreated her come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. But then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she, too desperate, would not go with me. But as it seems, she violence on herself. All this I know, and the marriage her nurse is privy, and if aught in this miscarried by my fault, let my old life be sacrificed some hour before his time unto the rigor of severest law. We still have known thee for a holy man. It's an interesting question. Uh, the, pri the prince says, we forgive you. We know you for a holy man. Did you see anything in his rendition of the events of this play that you consider to be a little suspect or a little concerning? I mean, what do you see as being, uh, you know, the friar's words? Is he trying to get himself off the hook? No, he's just confused. What does he leave out? In his statements about the events, what does he leave out? Does he leave out anything of great importance? Good. He's gonna he's gonna leave a lot about what the nurse does. But it's not so kind of good things. 
Right. She's trying to maybe protect the nurse. Trying to protect the nurse. There you go. There you go. Notice his own motivation. married him because I want you to stop. Right. He leaves out some of his own motivations. He almost seems to suggest that Romeo and Juliet were kind of, they kind of forced this thing on him, uh, which of course is partly true, right? Do you hold the friar responsible for the deaths of Romeo and Juliet? Kinda. Yes, mostly. His fault. Blame Friar John. Do you, do you want to, do you want to, do I have anyone that wants to argue you can't blame Friar Lawrence at all? Anyone? No. no one wants to make that argument. Yeah. Taylor, you're a debate person. No. I know, but I don't feel that way. And I All right, so I make the argument. It doesn't matter that you that you believe it or not. Let's listen to the argument. Why might we say Friar Lawrence has no implications? Because he's a priest. He, he no, didn't. Meaning what? He didn't mean that he had good issues. He didn't, yeah, he didn't mean he didn't, for any his intentions. His good. intentions were all good. Good. Let's keep going. Why does he decide to marry Romeo in the first place? Because he knows that they wouldn't come close to Go ahead, Butterfield. This is, a, this is an attempt to try and join families. What else? What does he know about Romeo's personality type? He's going to do it as is. You got it. If he doesn't marry them, something really tragic may happen. In other words, I'm going to do this to try and save that from happening. Of course, in the process, everything comes undone. Let's listen to the final words of the play. I brought my master news of Juliet's death, and then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, this same monument. This letter he early bid me give his father, and threatened me with death, going in the vault if I departed not and left him there. Give me the letter, I will look on it. Romeo lays the note. Raise the and raise the watch. Sir, what made your master in this place? He came with blood to strip his lady's grave, and bid me stand aloof, and so I hid. Then on comes one with life to oak the tomb, and by and by my master drew on him. Then I ran away to call the watch. This letter doth make good the friar's words, the cause of love, the tidings of her death. And here he writes that he did buy a poison of a poor apothecary, and therewithal came to this vault to die and lie with Juliet. Where be these enemies? Caprit, Montagu, See what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Your oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. But I can give thee more. For I will raise her statue in pure gold, that whilst Verona by that name is known, there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. Look at the princess. Blooming peace this morning will it bring. A son for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Start in your notes and point out the last line of the play inverts, it does rhyme, but it inverts the name of the play. We always call them what? We do. Notice how the play ends with the inversion, Juliet and Romeo. Now, of course, you can do that because you want to rhyme with woe. You got any other reasons you want to jot down in your notes why Shakespeare would do this? Um, maybe because Juliet died. Yeah, we've got this kind of focusing then in a different well, way well, on the names died. that are associated. Of course, technically, who dies first? Romeo. Oh, Romeo. Right? Of course, in the play, who dies first? No, I mean of the two lovers. Of the two lovers, right? It's Juliet, right? She'll die. Juliet, of course, dies as in not dead, but dead. You know, no, that kind of thing, right? All right, so there you go. Romeo and Juliet, final